What if I told you that auto gain control has been around since the 80s, at least? It has. And that's why I wanted to show you this. This is an Aphex compeller. These have been used in broadcast radio stations since, I think, like 1983, somewhere in that area. I ran across this one. Very decent price, and it does what it says on the tin. It does auto gain control. It levels things out. It's pretty neat. I'll show you how it works in a moment, but we need to take a peek under the hood. Because this is what's really fascinating about that. Not much in the way of integrated circuitry in this. This is old school. This is analog. You just want to rub it and go, mmm. I don't know. I'm not really into that. But regardless, it is very fascinating. It is a leveler. So, well, it does leveling, expansion, compression. So I do have leveling speed. You know, if you're going to be using it for music or if you're going to be using it for speech, you have output levels, zero, unity, plus four, and minus 10. You know, that's for pro gear, consumer gear. And of course, you do have an input level. But if you take a look around the board, there's not much there. This, you see this? This is a dot bar display drivers, those LM3914s. That's all they do. They drive the fancy LEDs that are going on in the front. Stick around and I'll show you how those work. They look very nice. On top of that, you get like a gang of op amps, like some... 353Ns, and um, a couple of low signal relays, some G6As, Corecom power supply. Yeah, it's extremely basic, but I mean, then again, I think this board, this particular board's from 1986, 1987, 86, but yeah, uh, you can just fix this with a voltmeter. That's why I think it's very fascinating and what it does and what it does so well to the point these are still used. You can still buy a brand new, not a 301. This is kind of an oddball one, but you can get the 320 digitals um, to this day, brand new. Then again, they're like a thousand dollars. So I probably won't, but this is where the magic happens right here. This is the dynamic release computer that does the program dependent compression release times. And it works in conjunction with the DVG, which is the dynamic verification gate, which does all the maths for the like historical average of the peak values. And it, it tells you if it's equal to a historical value. It just blows my mind that they were doing all this uh, so well to the point where I haven't really changed much in this system. Let's have a look at the back. That's it. You have input, you have output, and you have something called the leveling tie that I could never find to direct anything on what exactly that's used for, but a uh, fuse and a power cord. And just for fun, we're going to be using an Aphex compeller just to play around with it. Might as well get an Aphex preamp. I stumbled across this one. This is a 207D. It's nothing special. It's a two-channel preamp, but, you know, the let's get about 65 dB again. Let's get a little front lead meter, and it's got instrument jacks on the front, which is like ho-hum, doesn't really get interesting until we come to the back. Now, of course, you're going to have mic input, mic output, and there we go. Insert jacks, operating levels, plus four, minus ten. There's that. Not terribly, terribly fascinating. I'm getting to it. This is where it gets interesting. Not the word clock, not the spit if, but it's got AES out, which will work with my army hammerfall. So that means I have an AES digital converter that I can use an insert jack with. And I'm going to be using one of my homebrew cables. This is my uh, three pin XLR running over um, audio file grade cat six. And uh, I have an adapter in my army hammer phone that I've made for the uh, breakout connector. So I can just plug that jack in the back and it's going to work. But just to play around with it, um, also it's a tube amp, tube amp, it has a tube on the output stage, it's not a hipster tube amp. Um, going to be using the compeller as an insert, just for vocals. Typically, uh, this would be how it would you would typically see these, or you might have it on like the final chain. I see a lot of people try to put these on mix buses and stuff like that, but for, you know, like program control, typically, you throw it in as an insert. Especially this one being a mono, not stereo. So let's go play with it. Mmm, let's sit down and play with the compeller. I got it plugged in. This is not the ideal situation because um, I'm using OBS to capture a screen over. Long story short, I might get confused. So what do we have set up? 
over here. Um, this video should be coming up in post. I have the Aphex 207D. It's like an interesting little amp, mainly because it does digital AES out, but it has an insert jack. And in that insert jack, I have the Aphex 301 mono compeller plugged in, and both of these are running into my army hammer vault, which is great. On, and I gotta bounce back and forth because uh, that screen, wherever I end up putting it, that's not tight, and I'm recording the front shot separately, so you can see the meters bounce around and kind of see the knobs. But what do we have? We have input, process balance, output, and um, threshold. Starting with input, that guy, that's just going to control how much leveling compression is done. It's a one knob deal. It really is. It's, um, I don't know, the, I really should use the wording in the manual. I don't have a script, so I'm just going off the top of my head. Uh, the amount. The amount. And the second one goes, the second knob throws it. Process balance. Look at that science. Hard left, you have full leveling, and hard right is compression. The manual does say, even at, just put it at 12 o'clock, you can't go wrong, which is going to give you, like, an equal balance of um, compression, leveling, expansion. I have it set about nine. That's about where I like it. My voice doesn't compress very well, so I tend to shy away from um, compression. Then we have output. That knob makes sense. It's output. It's output trim. Just find control. And finally, silence threshold. And it's not a noise gate. It is absolutely not a noise gate. They make it a point of that. Being AGC, like auto game control. Uh, you've run into this if you're on a conference call, if you're in Zoom, on Skype, or Discord, and somebody has AGC enabled. They get up, they go do something. That level just rises and rises and rises and rises, and they plop back down, and they say something, and it blows your ears out. This prevents that. And it's fascinating, because it prevents it just using analog circuitry. There's not a lot of smarts in this thing, uh, uh, like integrated circuits. Which is one of the reasons I've always found compellers fascinating, and it works very well. You just set it to, okay, this kicks on when things are quiet in the room, and you'll see the light pops on, and it'll go back off as soon as I start talking. And that's it. I've talked to a guy uh, who repairs these because these are still in service, and I'm like, help me make sense of this manual. And I'm just overthinking it. You know, he said uh, right back, it's like, just turn the knobs until it sounds good. That's it. That's the story to it. And that's what I've done. So what is it doing? The compiler itself is doing leveling, expansion, compression. All at the same time, in real time, no wait on the processing. This is all being done live. And the goal is to, I, I like to think of it more as like sound reinforcement, you know, and limiting, I forgot limiting. It's going to keep all of your program material roughly at the same volume. You know, it's auto gain control in the 1980s, and they figured it out. They got it right the first time. There are newer versions of this, the uh, 320A, 320D, but they do the same thing. Um, to give you an idea, we have the compeller engaged, and it is doing its job perfectly. The compeller doesn't add any flavor. It doesn't add any funk. It doesn't have any soul. It's a soulless piece of 80s technology. It is. It's a little box filled with witchcraft from the 80s. Or it could even be worse. It could be alien technology from Melmac, for all I know. But doesn't add anything to your sound. At least that's kind of the point. You know, if you're going to be using this at a radio station or if you're going to be using it um, broadcast video, the audio for the video, and you're dealing with like different program levels for different materials, this is going to keep everything nice and level. You know, set it, forget it. And it'll do its thing. And that's exactly what it's doing. I have it keyed up. So let me show you. I've just switched the um, compressor into the off position. And I, I like to think of it as maybe um, sound reinforcement. Pay, pay, pay some attention to that meter. It's not quite as level if I get off mic or if I come around. You can really... Especially if I'm talking into the side of the microphone, if I'm looking, which I have a problem doing because I have these two monitors over here. And I tend to look at my co-host. But it is a little quieter. 
But if I'm looking at this and I'm going to be sitting here and I'm like, hey, I'm very focused and I'm going to da, 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 hey, whatever. I, I can split zero on a K20. That's not a problem. I have enough vocal control for that. I've been doing this long enough. But you try doing that for four, five hours during a live stream where you're just trying to have a conversation, man. You're like, hey, uh, all right, we're going to be doing this. We're going to be talking about that. And, you know, you might get a little loud, but then you're going to get quiet. This is where the compeller comes in. Now that we've kicked that right back in, I can come right across the side of the microphone. I can come right in front of the microphone. I can come right back on this side of the microphone and look at it. The little compeller is doing its job. It's doing its job. And that's what makes these little devices special. You know, um, they are analog. They're not digital. And yes, or, or they're not necessarily doing something that I couldn't do in post. In fact, this is something I do do in post. Where this comes in handy is for live streaming. You know, broadcasting. Who would have thought? Um, the modern equivalent of broadcasting. And they still do that job very well tied into the current system I have in the studio, which is this mix bus and, you know, utilizing NetJack effectively as a tape machine, shooting the stems out over the network in real time over to OBS to another box that does a mix down, but also records them in multi-track. But yeah, it can be all over the place. Now, even if I wanted to get like far away, I don't know. How about this? Can we get an idea of, um, yeah. I mean, it's not going to work miracles, but that's a lot better. I guess maybe we could play around with the settings. Let, let's uh, move it all the way over to leveling. We need to come up with something to say, so. Hello, I'm Vin Stone, and I'll be testing leveling. Hello, I'm Vin Stone, and I'm testing leveling. That's all the way to the left. Let's put it 12 o'clock. Hello, I'm Vin Stone, and I'm testing leveling. That's got a little bit of funk to it, doesn't it? Now we have it. Hello, I'm Vin Stone, and I'm testing leveling. That's all the way to the right. And I'm going to put it back where I had it, which is roughly 9 o'clock. So, yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was fascinating, and um, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to go out and run out and buy one of these. Because they're not cheap. They're not well, if you buy like a new three hundred uh, three twenty D new, yeah, it's about a thousand bucks. If you look around on eBay, Reverb dot com, you can find like the three hundred or three twenty A. Usually anywhere between three to six hundred dollars. Which, I mean, you really have to like, hey, everything sounds fine when I talk it. When I talk it, yes. When I talk like this, I can live with it. It's wonderful. I can EQ my way out of this mess live on air. Or, you know, if you want something like that. If, if. I got this for 99 bucks. So come on. I mean, uh, that's, that's why I got it. Because normally in post, I'm bad about when we're doing live shows. I'll stay on mic, but I have a lot of dynamic range and I won't, I don't look at meters when we're doing shows. So I'll always have to go back and uh, set up automation, set up an automation curve. And fortunately I got faders over here. <laughs> I'm not trying to do it with a mouse and just kind of ride the faders out and get everything leveled up for my voice. So it's uh, more legible. This, this is just saving me a bunch of time, especially for live. And I like the effect. I like what it does. And to be perfectly honest, um, if I can find a 320A, which is just a stereo, but two mono channels, probably going to yoink one of those because, um, you know, just testing with this Army Hammerfall, I'm able to use, you know, analog breakout um, with, I can just do external uh, external sense what do I want to do uh yeah just do a no inserts inserts I'm still looking over here um 
and do an insert and break out from digital and run it analog out of the hammer fall and run it back in. It adds about like six milliseconds. So it, it's a good way to take a digital signal and break it out, which I can do a couple of times. But yeah, that's the compeller. I just wanted to show everyone that it's kind of neat. And uh, I, I'm glad I picked it up. But hey, thanks for watching This Old Vin Plays With Old Hardware. And uh, thanks to everybody, all the beautiful, beautiful, lovely psychopaths that are supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You make this stuff happen, and um, this is probably going to be the most vintage retro thing I've ever done. That's not really my style, but now you know about compellers and the dark mystical arts, um, and the strange, bizarre times, the lore and technology of the 1980s. All right. Just get out there, though. Doesn't matter what you do. Start a Twitch channel, start a YouTube channel, and make something awesome.